This is a 2006 Chevy Impala with a 3500 engine. It's 3.5 liter. So let me show you the codes first. It is a P0449 is the one we're going after. The owner of the vehicle replaced the vent solenoid and the connector that goes to it. I'll show you that here in a second. For those of you that don't have this, you can follow along just using a digital multimeter. Okay, just got to make sure you have a good ground doing these tests. So the two wires that are back here is a power feed and a ground side switched control. And so what we want to do is we want to check both of them. This is the power feed for it. There's 12 volts on that. And then we check the control wire, which is the white wire in this case. And we have the same voltage. So what that tells me is my solenoid is intact that my winding is good and that uh, we do not need a solenoid. This fault code is not from an open coil. So what we want to do now is we want to take the scan tool in a bi-directional mode. Just up top. Notice my, my voltage is not changing. So what this is telling us guys is we have an open circuit between the computer and this solenoid in the back or we have a faulty computer. What I've seen in the past on every single one of these is the wiring back here though you'll have an issue let me take this power probe out the wiring you'll have a problem right right in the connectors themselves like right in here they'll actually be broken inside the insulation so you guys that are watching this that have a open circuit or low voltage code this this code for these evaps if you read 12 and 0, that's suggesting an open in the solenoid and you need to replace the solenoid. If you're reading 12 and 12 like I have with this same code, then you have an open in the wiring and, oh, sweet. Did you see that? If, you know, it's funny. I, I did this off camera and I tugged on these and it was fine. Um, and that's why I turned the camera on. I said, man, I, I'm going to have an opportunity to show maybe a bad computer driver or an open in the harness. And so what I was just talking about is every one of these I've ever seen, when you have a problem, it's, it's been right in this area. And, and there it was right there. So I just was tugging on that, not hard at all. And um, that uh, is why I'm setting that fault code. We need to fix that connector. And I can prove it to you. What I'll do is I'll strip the wiring back here and we'll connect um, our... Uh, power probe and I'll show you the driver test and, and honestly you can just use a regular incandescent test light too would work um, let me show you that test before we uh, wrap this up one more thing guys um, take a look at the connector and uh, you can see the green cruddies that are inside of that that's been broken for a while when you look at the wiring connectors they look fine and again what you want to do is you tug on them and you saw what happened so here's my setup using a jumper to my power probe now and I strip the uh, connector back on the one side I'm checking the computer side of this circuit now okay I want to change this to my driver test and now when I turn this on which would be closed if I close it see the voltage on the tool drop down to 0.2 and see the green light light and I turn it off alright so how is my computer driver as I'm turning this on and off so closed is on and open is off again the tip voltage on this what you're reading would be the ground side of the LED bulb on this tool and when the computer grounds the circuit you see that voltage will drop and it's putting about, well, whatever the current draw is of that little green LED bulb, which is uh, the owner's manual of the tool says less than 30 milliamps. So computer safe for sure. And, um, you know, you're using the tool to substitute the coil in the car on the solenoid. That's what that is. So this would be now the tool is feeding 12 volts through the bulb. And the bulb does not have a ground right now. So with no current flow, you have no voltage drop, and that's why you're reading this number. Um, so now at this point, the last thing I need to do is I need to fix this connector, and uh, that's not going to be very fun, but maybe I'll show you how I do that. All right, guys, so I couldn't, uh, I could not do this underneath the car, hold the camera, and show you what to do. So I actually cut the good 
feed wire and it's not going to be an issue we're going to uh, we're going to fix that as well what we want to do is take this connector apart alright so take that blue connector off the end and now we need to release this from here this can be a little bit tricky um, what I'm going to use is just a T-pin and um, if you look at the connector there's a um, the side the terminal goes in which is here and then just behind that is a little cutout and so what we want to do is push this into that cutout and uh, try to release the there's a mechanism inside that we want to fold over kind of I'll show it to you when I get this apart so I'm putting pretty good tension on this so this is kind of a little bit big of a pin I think I got it and then once you release that from that side then you pull this out when I went down inside the connector I was going between here and here and I was forcing this piece right here down so when you're done we want to bend this back up so that's what you want it to look like when you put it back in the connector and again so what I was doing from the outside is I was taking this pin I was going down inside and I was forcing this part down so I could pull it out of the connector I'm gonna pull this out so I'm just gonna slide the weather pack seal out okay so I've shown this procedure before in the video that I'm thinking of it was a crank sensor connector on a neon and I showed how to save a connector like this and what we want to do is we want to heat the end of this insulation and then pull it away because I want to save as much of the wire right here as I can I'm going to use my fingers and pull it off hopefully without burning myself too much I normally use a lighter which works so there you go so it's a little blurry okay all right so we're going to use that wire to fix this all right so what we're going to do is we're going to mesh these two together like that right and then gonna grab the ends we're going to twist it a little bit hard because it's so close to the connector what I found to be the most effective is to get a little puddle underneath what you're soldering so in between the gun and the wire first this helps transfer the heat and you see how quickly that absorbed into that and we'll go all the way down into that connector what would have been better is if I would have shortened that a little bit I might be able to get away with sliding this insulation down I could use some heat shrink over that too but now we're gonna put this connector back in just gonna push that through there we have one repaired connector so now the only issue is I got some bare wire right there I'm gonna use a little piece of heat shrink Oh, one last thing. Um, get you a shot of the inside of that. And uh, I, I'm actually going to put some uh, sealer inside of that. In fact, I'll do it with both. You saw what happened. I mean, it corroded. We get any water in here, we're going to cause corrosion. Again, it'll take a couple years, but we still want to prevent that. All right, we're back in the car. Everything's all sealed up. And uh, we'll put some black conduit over this, of course, when we're done. Just wanted you guys to see the repair. And what I'm going to do is just uh, turn this valve on, which is to close it. We should hear a click. I'm just going to go back and forth, on and off. I'll show you one more time. I'll unplug the solenoid, and we'll watch that go to open slash short to ground. That's with the solenoid unplugged, so you can see the computer monitors that all the time, whether or not it is energizing it. And that is plugged back in. And you see the signal on the scan tool change. So we're good. That's it. Uh, open wire on a EVAP vent solenoid. Make sure you guys are checking for that. If you find the solenoid is good 
that would be your next most likely thing is a broken wire right near the connector.